Today we are going to read the book, Weird Friends. Unlikely Allies in the Animal Kingdom. In Weird Friends, we are going to learn more about the fascinating world of mutualism, a relationship that is beneficial to both partners. Mutualism can seem very strange because the most unlikely creatures do amazing things to help each other survive. Some act as bodyguards or booby traps, others as hairdressers or housekeepers. Let's go check out these weird friends. Hello. Today we are going to be reading a book called Weird Friends, Unlikely Allies in the Animal Kingdom. Let me see what that picture is. You see the, it's like a bunch of fish and a hippo. And it's by Jose Aruego and Ariane Dewey. Sometimes in the wild, animals you might think could hurt each other actually help each other in surprising ways. They share food or a home. They warn one another of approaching predators. They cluster side by side for protection. Some animals even give others a good bath. Their survival often depends on these weird friendships. I wonder if we've talked about any of these weird friendships. The clownfish and the sea anemone. The bright little clownfish needs protection from its enemies, so it chooses a poisonous sea anemone to be its bodyguard. For about an hour, the clownfish carefully darts in and out of the anemone's deadly tentacles. Little by little, it becomes immune to their sting. Then it moves in. The clownfish is safe from predators. So is the anemone, because its enemy, the butterfly fish, is afraid of the clownfish's bite. So both the clownfish and the sea anemone are benefiting. So what type of symbiotic relationship is that when both are benefiting? That's right, it's mutualism. Mutualism is when they both benefit. All right, so we have the rhino and the cattle egret. As they graze across the plains, a rhino and her calf stir up grasshoppers. But the rhino can't see very well and may not notice danger approaching. So she lets a sharp-eyed cattle egret perch on her back to act as a lookout. The egret is rewarded with an endless feast of grasshoppers. So since the rhino can't see, the egret is helping the rhino and they are both benefiting. So when they both benefit, what type of symbiotic relationship is that? That's right, it is mutualism. And um, I know that some of my students had read an example of symbiosis with the rhino kicking up the bugs and um, feeding a bird. Um, and some people said that could be mutualism too, but I think in this particular situation, it's describing that, you know, the bugs are a problem. Um, the grasshoppers, I mean, the grasshoppers are a problem and the, the rhino can't see. And the other example that we looked at, it was just that, you know, when they walked by, they kicked these up and then, um, an animal that was nearby, it would, would be able to eat or the one that hung by it. So sometimes we have to look closely at those different clues or those different, um, details to, to make sure if it's mutualism or commensalism or parasitism, obviously. So, um, sometimes just some of the wording can make a big difference. All right, let's check out the next one. Oh, so here's the other one. If the egret spies danger, it screams. And if that doesn't get the rhino's attention, it taps on the rhino's head until the mother and baby gallop to safety. So it's also helping in another way by helping with protection, giving warnings. And if, if the rhino doesn't react to the warnings, that egret is like, hey, get moving. <laughs> Let's look at another one. The blind shrimp and the goby. One species of shrimp is completely blind, but it knows how to get help. It digs a hole in the sand, crawls in, and waits for a goby fish to swim in for shelter. The goby has a place to hide and the blind shrimp has a guide to lead it when it's safe to go out. So that's pretty cool. Um, so it, it can get it can get help there. Um, does okay, so they're both benefiting because the goby has a place to hide 
and the blind shrimp has a guide to lead it to where it saves or to, to know when it's safe to go out. So they're both benefiting. We've got more mutualism. When, while they're feeding the shrimp's antennae or the shrimp's antenna feel the goby's every move. If a predator approaches, the goby flicks its tail and the two swim quickly back into their safe burrow. So you can see the, the danger that they're in. So yeah, they are different species and they're hanging out and they both are benefiting from their relationship with one another. Mutualism. Ooh, we haven't read this one yet. The ostrich and the zebra. And if you go to the Columbus Zoo um, in the summertime in the heart of Africa, they have um, zebras and ostriches out there um, so you can view them. And they, I think that they are able to get to one another. There's like different layers, like the lions can't get to these guys, but it almost looks like you can see them. It looks like that they are together. It's almost like an optical illusion. Um, but I believe these two are together um, outside at the, at the zoo in the summertime at the heart of Africa. So let's look at the ostrich and the zebra. Ostriches have terrific eyes. Zebras have terrific ears. When the two get together, nothing can sneak up on them. That's why ostriches and zebras often roam the savanna together, chomping on seeds and grasses. That's pretty cool. So they can see well, they can hear well. So they're, they're helping each other stay safe. By the way, I like the, the zebra's face. This is like, what? Hello? <laughs> Sorry, I love illustrations. They're funny. Oh, here's, here's what happens. So the, ost the ostriches look and the zebras listen for predators. The first to detect a hungry lion warns the others, and before it can attack, they all flee to safety. So that is a really cool relationship that those two have. The red phalaropes and the sperm whale. The red phalaropes follow a pod of sperm whales as they swim far out to sea. The birds hover over the water and wait for a whale to come up for air. See if this one continues. Yeah. Okay. So look how giant the 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 whale is compared to them. So they're much smaller. It says, as soon as a whale surfaces, the birds land on its back and begin to pry parasites from cuts and cracks in its skin. Being free of these pests make the whale feel better, and the phalaropes enjoy a tasty meal. But the birds have to eat quickly because once the whale blows, it takes a breath, slaps its tail and dives deep into the ocean. So yeah, like the whale is so big, think about it. They can't get those things off of its body. It's not like they have hands where, you know, like we're itching or we can say, hey, uh, there's a scratch up my back or, or do you, if you see a bug back there, can you get it? Um, it doesn't have that luxury. So when it comes up, these, these birds, are feasting on the things that are, are harming that whale and that the whale can't get rid of. So um, another example of mutualism. I love it. <laughs> All right, red ants and the large blue butterfly. So when red ants find a particular type of caterpillar, they lug it back to their nest. There, they tickle its tummy till it oozes the sweet honeydew they love to sip. In return, the ants feed the caterpillar all it can eat. The caterpillar lives unharmed in the ant's nest for 11 months, eating and pupate, pupating. Finally, it emerges as a large blue butterfly, shakes out its wings and flies away. Soon the ants will go in search of another caterpillar. So that is really cool too. Like they're both benefiting, okay? Um, you know, the they get the, the, the ants get the, um, the honeydew from the caterpillar and, um, and the ants feed the caterpillar all it can eat. So they're both getting food here until it becomes a butterfly and then it's gone. So their, their friendship is kind of over. That mutualism is done once it becomes that butterfly and they just, those ants get a new caterpillar. I like that. Hermit crab and sea anemones. So we have uh, sea anemones again in another relationship. When a hermit crab needs a new home, it finds an empty shell, moves in, and sticks sea anemones on top for protection. The anemone's stinging tentacles scare away octopuses, which love to eat hermit crabs. 
Anemones can't walk, so the crab provides them with transportation to new feeding spots. And because crabs are messy eaters, there are always food scraps for the anemones to nibble. Once again, both benefiting. That's why these are all weird friends, because we have those two different species that have a relationship that they're both benefiting. So friendships we both benefit from, right? Um, so that's why this is all mutualism. So we've got the hermit crab and that sea anemone. So um, I just love all these examples. It's really cool. The impalas and baboons. At the water hole, a herd of delicate impalas stay close to a troop of tough baboons. The impalas use their excellent senses of smell, hearing, and sight to detect danger. I'll wait to turn that page, make sure you can see it all. If the impalas notice a predator approaching, they dance nervously. That warns the baboons who bear their fangs and snarl to scare the attacker away. So that's cool. So the impalas are like, hey, there's danger. And the baboons are like, we'll get them. So it's cool. They're working together. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next one. We got the horse mackerel and the Portuguese man of war. Uh, when the horse mackerel is pursued by an enemy, it races for home. Ah, I love their faces. Look at them. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get you. So they're racing home. Get me home. Get me to safety. The mackerel's home is a colony of small organisms living together called a Portuguese man-o-war. It, it has venomous ribbons that can reach 70 feet long and that shoot paralyzing barbed harpoons into whatever they touch. But they don't harm the horse mackerel. So because it doesn't feel their sting, the mackerel is safe and the man of war is well fed because any predator that comes too close will end up as the man of war's dinner. So the Portuguese man of war looks a lot like um, a jellyfish in that in this image, right? Um, but these little guys, they can they they don't they don't get stung by the man of war. So they have that safety, but also they are bringing predators like this mean guy into the man of war. So the man of war will kill it and then eat. So they're both benefiting. It's that, that's some mutualism. Forest mouse and the beetles. <laughs> At night, the forest mouse scampers around the rainforest looking for food with beetles clinging to its fur and face. But the mouse doesn't mind because the beetles eat the fleas that infest, infest its fur. During the day while the mouse sleeps, the beetles dismount and eat the bugs in the mouse's burrow. The beetles are always well fed and the mouse and its house are free of itchy insects. That's cool. That's like a, it's almost like a little housekeeper, right? The housekeeper goes in and eats those fleas. So yeah, those beetles are helping that mouse. And that, so that mouse is benefiting and the beetles are benefiting. It's awesome. Mutualism. <laughs> Ooh, this one's got three. The hippo, the oxpeckers, and the blackfish, the black labiofish. The hippo can't scrub itself, so it wades into the river and waits for oxpeckers to land on its back. These birds peck off and eat ticks and other bothersome bugs. Meanwhile, in the water below, black labiofish gobble up anything clinging to the rest of the hippo. When all the parasites have been removed, the hippo naps in the cool mud. So these guys are all eating parasites off of this hippo. So the hippo's like, yeah, get them. And so they like it because these guys are all getting food and he is getting cleaned up. So that's awesome. It's our mutualism, those weird friendships. And that is actually from the cover of this book. You remember that from the beginning? Sometimes it's cool to go, oh yeah, I remember that now. Ooh, the Rossi and the Google-eyed fish. When the Rossi is hungry, it dances on its head and wags its tail to announce that its cleaning station is open. <laughs> Soon, lots of filthy Google-eyed fish are lining up for a bath. Like a small vacuum with their teeth, the Rossi nips gunk from gills and scours parasites off scales. All the fish get a good washing and the Rossi has a hearty meal.
the Tatara and the Sudi Shearwater. <laughs> uh, the Tatara is a slow and lazy reptile. It rarely even builds its own nest. Instead, the Tatara finds a Sudi Shearwater's clifftop burrow and moves in while the bird is out. So he's like, hey, I'm moving in. <laughs> the bird's out here. So it's, it's in here at the top of the cliff. But the Tatara is a good guest. It licks up every last slug, moth, worm, and beetle in the tunnel. When the Sudi shear water returns, the nest is clean and the Tatara is welcome to stay. So that's cool. So uh, he moves in and cleans. And so he's getting a place to stay. And this one is getting some a clean home. Both benefiting. I'd like that. <laughs> All right, let's look at water thick knees and the crocodile. A bird called a water thick knee sometimes fills its nest next to a crocodile's home. So there he is. While the crocodile leaves to go hunting, the bird watches both of their nests. So look, he's like, I'm, ch I'm watching our nests. Watch out. Look at that snake is coming down. If trouble threatens the egg or young in either nest, the bird screeches until the crocodile comes charging home. The water thick knees and her family are safe beside their ferocious neighbor because the crocodile will not eat its babysitter. That's cool. So this is the babysitter for all the babies and the eggs. So there's both nests. And if there's problems, it'll say, problem, problem. And it'll alert the crocodile and the crocodile will come after whatever is coming after and threatening them. Once again, mutualism, both benefiting. I hope you enjoyed all of these weird friends and our examples of mutualism. It's time to apply what you know. If the symbiotic relationship between a dog and a flea is parasitism, what kind of symbiosis is the relationship between a service dog and its human owner? Remember, whenever we're trying to figure out any type of symbiotic relationship, the first question we ask is, do both organisms benefit? If the answer is yes, it's mutualism. If it's no, we ask, is one of the organisms being harmed? If the answer is yes, it's parasitism. If that answer is no, it's commensalism. So what do you think? Are both organisms benefiting between a service dog and its human owner? What do you think? This type of symbiosis is mutualism because the human is helped or protected by the dog and the dog is fed and cared for by the human. They both benefit from the relationship. It's mutualism. We've checked out a lot of different examples of mutualism. What examples of mutualism can you find? That's all for me. Take care. Peace.